With this kind of start, it makes me wonder how silly I can get. The only thing the Ironclad has yet to master in our Spire Mastery Challenge here is the Champion Bell. Uh, but we'll also look for any opportunities we can find to get colorless cards mastered. Hmm. <laughs> this immediately visually jumps out to me. I don't think this is a good path, but there is a faint chance here of uh, sniping two elites with Niao's Lament, which is always entertaining. Blue 7 max remove 2 is also pretty good overall. I think removing 2 strikes on Ironclad is just fine. Shenjo with 1 short of 3 years. So close. Thank you. For the heckin' lengthy amount of support. What are the odds of no combats in 5 question marks in a row? Pretty low. Very low, in fact. But they're not zero. There's always a hope. And I think it's quite reasonable we get the first elite for, for actually free. That said, it doesn't leave us with much of an act. You really would like to get more done if possible. I wonder if a transform is better than remove two. More events is more opportunities for curses. That's true. It's a tough one. Let's see, if I wasn't going to do the, the silly nonsense, what other paths can we take through this act that are more reasonable? Hmm. Oh, I see this one. Here we go. Ah, yes. Let me go that way. Or grab the extra rest site. But I like this three elite, grab the burning elite path. That's more broadly useful. And for that, I would take either Transform or Remove 2. How's it going, Pookie Roar? I've got a couple of videos on the YouTube that uh, can be broadly useful ironclad. Help. I've got an ironclad tier list. I think this is the command for it. Yeah, there's my my ranking all the ironclad cards. I kind of talk about the use case for each of them and kind of what order you have to take some of them in. Uh, I've also got a how to kill the heart as ironclad video on YouTube that I think can help as well, uh, showing some of the ways to get started on this character and build out with whatever the game offers you. Let's see if I can find that. I see guide? Question mark? Is that it? Ironclad guide. I'm sure I made a video, a uh, command for this, but I can't remember for the life of me what it is. No. Hmm. Oh, the guides command needs an update, actually. Those are my really old guides. Saw the Ironclad, how to heart. All right, good. That was a more defensive build. Still on how to do the strength slash exhaust style. It can definitely be a, a little uh, tough to work with. Strength is really all about getting some, some damage going, purging um, non-attack cards where you can, and just sort of leaning into dealing damage quickly enough that enemies don't get a chance to hit you back. But if you want to scale that into boss fights, you're really going to need to be a little creative. Let's start with Transform 1 here. Let's transform a strike into a limit break. Okay, you wanted to see strength? We're already incentivized to go strength here, as we have a double your strength card. But the problem is we don't have any strength yet, so how do we get started here? Well, I'd say the first thing we need to do is look at some card rewards from combats. Maybe we'll find a strength card. Ideally, we'd like it in Flame. We can also make do with something like Flex or Spot Weakness. <clears throat> I'm going to choose to play this here so that we exhaust it. By the way, we don't want to be redrawing into that. And now we're a bit behind on damage. This enemy has 30 health. We have to play 5 strikes to kill. Next turn will be attacked for 16. Seems like I should... If I play Bash this turn, we bring to 22. I'd need 3 hits. Probably better to just strike, strike. Uh, 
Oof. That ain't it. Should have done the math on uh, Bash. I wonder if bashing instead of striking twice would have gotten us the kill there. I don't think it would. Wow, what luck. We get offered the strength card. The best one that we could have been offered. In Flame here. Gains two strength. The reason this is the best one, in my opinion, is because it's unconditional. Which means... Uh, we can always make sure we have strength for limit break after playing this. That's going to allow us to do a lot of damage per hit. Let's actually take one less combat now. Now that we already have a good card. Turns out the event was a combat, by the way. So the Niao's Lament Path, totally a bad idea. Good talk. Good talk. I think we just blocked twice here. Might be able to get a little bit of health back in this fight. Just a little bit. The Strengthening. 10 damage strikes. <laughs> okay, Flex Potion. This is also really, really good to find here. This is 5 strength. At the end of the turn, we lose that 5 strength. Flex Potion plus Limit Break can give us strength for a whole fight. And Heavy Blade is here. Strength affects this card 3 times. Get in here, Heavy Blade. We're going strong this build. It's time. This is an amazing start, actually. What a thematic, what a thematic assemblage of uh, Cartitude. All right, I'll keep taking events here. I wanted something that wasn't a combat, like a heal, for example. We're only missing 11 health, but that's still potentially worth paying for. Otherwise, we could remove a card here. This deck might genuinely want to remove a defend. Who's our act boss? Slime boss. Defends aren't that good on Ironclad. Let's let's go let's go all offense. Let's dunk a defend here. We're already down one strike. And lean into the offense. All offense all the time. Let's go. Don't think we play bash there. No, we wanna inflame limit break this turn. Next turn, the heavy blade of the gods smites this poor worm in the face. 26 damage. Bang. Plus 10 damage. Is a dead worm. And our health is on the rise here. Note that uh, for for many combats, the all offensive strategy can be one of the best ways to get through the qu fight quickly without losing a lot of health. If you're looking for a good way to take advantage of strength, look no further than Twin Strike. It's not amazing by any means. Just 5 damage twice, but... That scales off our strength twice, and like many of the unlike many of the other options that hit more than twice, this targets an enemy of our choosing and costs one. There are not many cards where both of those things are true, so twin strength it is. It's definitely going to slap with four or more strength, and I'm quite happy to have it as an added uh, boon here. Unfortunately, we will have to get walloped in the face by this acid slime that's just part of being ironclad we take 12 here we're going to heal six at the end of combat as long as this is the only hit that we take we'd even say this is a pretty good fight as far as the act one hard pool goes a bonk chunk two 10 hit point slimes perfectly killed by limit break strike strike so we're only down six hit points for this fight that's really not that bad We get another potion as we go into the elite. Blood for blood, shrug it off, body slam. Shrug it off feels quite excellent in a deck where we've already removed a defend, replaces that missing defend and adds a little bit of card draw to it. In addition to improving the block value, really rounds out the deck quite a lot. Blood for blood can be a really nice pickup. Uh, if we take repeated hits, it becomes free, but it's not that good against the slime boss. And it's competing for upgrades at the moment. Is Limit Break the first upgrade? No, Limit Break is actually, spoiler alert, unlikely to get upgraded at all in this entire run. There's a couple reasons for that. But first and foremost is that if we successfully play Limit Break and double our strength one time, it's likely that we can win the fight decisively at that time. And we should not need to further double our strength again. You can definitely reach very high amounts of strength by repeatedly playing Limit Break. 
Um, this works really well with Headbutt, for example. But most decks really don't need more than one use of the Limit Break card. Instead, we'd much prefer to upgrade our initial strength gain source. The Inflame is definitely the priority upgrade. We'd much rather do 3 to 6 as opposed to 2 to 4 to 8. Uh, and we'd also like to upgrade probably the Heavy Blade or Twin Strike. But uh, Inflame is definitely the first upgrade, for sure. Yeah, as Merle says, as fun as 200 strength can be, 10 is usually more than sufficient. That said, there's a lot to be enjoyed in Spire uh, in pursuing what I'm going to call degenerate game states. Going above and beyond what's required to win a combat and just sort of having fun. For example, scaling to 999 metallicize against the champ just because you can. Always a good time. Would having Reach Reaper, Reaper change the logic? Yes. With Reaper, there is more incentive to get a, a much higher strength value. Although, again, the, the fights where we can afford to hang around and play Limit Break multiple times and then Reaper to get health back are few and far between. But it would definitely it would change the logic. Yes, definitely. Okay. Flex Pot's not a turn one kill here, right? We would do 10 damage twice plus 11. That's not even close to enough. Maybe we consider using the Dexterity Potion in this fight. Keep the Flex Pot for something a bit more dangerous. This is a pretty reasonable fight with a Dex Pot, although we don't have that many block cards. I suppose this is probably the best the Dex Pot is ever going to be. Sure. General strategy in this fight, pick either the front or back sentry, whichever one has the least health, and focus them down as quickly as you can. Blocking is not as important as removing the number of enemies, uh, lowering the number of enemies that you're facing. Oh, nice draw. Yeah, six strength should be plenty here. I think I'll block for ten rather than dealing twelve. Good, didn't draw the Heavy Blade. Next turn we can Heavy Blade defend. Heavy Blade does 32 damage. Okay, this was a really good Dexterity Potion. Please die. Looks like we're going to take 10 damage in two turns. Not much we can do about that. Maybe should have targeted this one, then. Worked out, though. Yeah, five days. Fair enough. It'll happen to you in this fight eventually. Play it, all, play it often enough or long enough and brick draw like that just happens. But note that thanks to the Burning Blood, instead of 12 health, we have 30 health. That's the power of the Sustain of Ironclad. Another Heavy Blade? Let's go. Double Heavy Blade. This is almost a decent Clash deck, too. Pen Nib here to double the damage of every 10th attack is also very appropriate. This card, this deck is gonna smash. I don't usually like Heavy Blade. This card does very little damage relative to the cost uh, before you have any strength, but we've had a fun time so far. But it is quite terrible turn one. Speed Potion, huh? I'm wondering if I just cash the Speed Potion in for five hit points. Speed Potions in Act 1 usually struggle to find value for me. Yeah, this surely is the, the run. We need we need Dubudal into Necronomicon. Clearly. I'm just gonna use this. There we go. Shrug. Defend in flame? Yeah, defend in flame. Alright, the bash was not the correct. I should have struck twice turn one. Oh, you stinker. Yeah. It gets me good. I think we could have prevented that with a bit of foresight, but I failed to. Oh well. Sever Soul, Warcry, and Havoc. None of these are really required. There's definitely some use for uh, Warcry. Warcry can put Limit Break back on top if we haven't drawn in Flame yet. I'll take a Warcry, sure. 
I like to think of this as, as card manipulation. You sort of get to retain one card. Although it does cost you one card draw. Self-forming clay. Whenever we lose health, we'll gain block on the next turn. Very much appreciated. And we have two elites and two more regular combats coming up, huh? This might be a situation where resting is appropriate. But I could also see upgrading this twin strike. We can always go, if we don't feel like we have enough health, we can always go this way. Let's upgrade a card. Let's do it. And a dad joke for 2-itch TV. Why did the Ironclad take up penmanship? He'd heard of and desires to get some writer's block. I think we're going to upgrade either Bash or Twin Strike here. The heavy blades are... I find it a lot harder to justify upgrading either when there's duplicates like this. Just doing more immediate damage, no matter what draw order we're doing, is uh, really valued to me. So I'm going to upgrade this Twin Strike. No refunds. None at all. Alright, really appreciate this enemy, the Legav Legavulin, because they sleep for three turns, allowing us to set up some nice stuff here. Let's go bash in flame. We are going to take a lot of damage in this fight if we don't go very ham very fast. So I think this is where the Flex Potion comes in. Flex Potion takes us to 8 strength. Limit Break takes us to 16 strength. Heavy Blade does 93 damage. And we still have 11 strength after the limit break wears off. R.I.P. Okay. And we got a blood potion. We definitely keep to get to go to the Burning Elite today. Good times. Currents, thanks for the three months of the Prime sub. Keeping your sub current. What, what did the Ironclad ask for at the barber shop? A heavy fade. Love it. Not willing to share, I'm afraid, bum fiend. Hope you understand. Best and worst class to start with a boss relic. I think best, personally, is the defect. Worst is, in my personal experience, silent, but I think statistically that's not the case. Everybody's actually quite good with the boss swap. Juggernaut. Another heavy blade or a shrug. Take another shrug. Become the shrug or not. Man, Hourglass going into Slime Boss, I'm always very happy about. Much more likely to win. Can we kill this fool in two hits? Maybe. One of them was Heavy Blade. Take self forming Clay. Yes. Good. Excellent. Whirlwind. Whirlwind with pen nib and lots of strength. This is the AoE card you want when uh, when you've got strength stuff going on. Happy to see a Whirlwind here. This is exactly how you want a strength focused deck to, to, to be developing. Really good relics, really good attack cards. Uh, we'd like to add another strength source now, either another inflame, a spot weakness, or a flex, or even a demon form in a pinch would work. But we're going to come up against a problem soon where... It's quite hard to get our strength in play. Because we can only get strength by doing inflame and then limit break. That's no good.
Another potion. Okay, we can drink the blood potion now. Pick up the block potion. I guess I needn't have been worried about hit points. We ended up healing a ton from those encounters. Dropkick Carnage True Grit. Carnage is a nice, unconditionally good attack card. Does damage without the strength in play, so that might be a reason to grab it. I'm also pretty happy skipping this one. That's right. Always play your whirlwind for zero. To up that pendant more when you can. How's it going, Paradox? I think we skip. We don't want to take a card from every combat in Act 1. It's too much. Put that on top. Wow, these sentries have a lot of health. Okay, glad we have Mercury Hourglass here helping out. This is going to be a tough one. I can whirlwind for three, but it barely tickles them. Can't quite kill with Heavy Blade here. Reasonable time to use the block potion. I think we could also reasonably save this block potion for next act. Go defend whirlwinds. Five to each of them. Kill this one next turn. And I think I'll take four here to get three more block next turn. Hit this one next. The yeah, additional block from the self-forming clay is, is really crucial to making this sort of thing work really well. Just getting three block per turn for free here. Bonk. A few days. Let's see what happens here. All right, we either take ten and keep pen nib, or we don't take ten. I don't think we need the pen nib on nine necessarily for slime boss. Let's just leave now. Letter opener, yet another relic that provides free output here for playing three skills in one turn. We now deal five damage to all enemies. That's a really good set of relics so far. Very, very good. That makes the war cry actually a lot better, the letter opener. We're offered yet another shrug. Did we take a third shrug? Honestly, with letter opener, I think we do. Three shrugs, please. A very solid foundation to a uh, deck blockwise. Love it. It's going to feel really good knack too, especially. They're quite good with when you're frail even. And now we upgrade Whirlwind to make our AoE damage more relevant. It's definitely the next best upgrade here. Fight against slime boss really shouldn't be that bad. We can tank a big slime hit if we need to. We've got a constant output from the Mercury Hourglass. It's good stuff. We did whiff the limit break. That's okay though. Let's just Twin Strike Heavy Blade here. Split the slime in two. We create two medium slimes with quite a bit of health, but again, the Mercury Hourglass and the Whirlwind will both serve to make that not too big of a problem. Looks like we're getting weakened and frailed regardless of what we do. I guess we target the front one then, as the front one is more aggressive or more damaging with its attacks on average than the, the green one. In this case, they both go for 18, so it doesn't really matter, but good news is I get to split them both in two, so that's nice. Thank you, Mercury Hourglass, for your assistance here. But then this happens. <laughs> Dang it. 
This is the worst offensive turn you can see in this fight. 10, 10, 12, 12. They can't do any more damage than this. Spooky. This would be a time to consider a uh, potion, perhaps, although we don't need to. We have enough health to survive this, even if we were to take it all, and we can actually just mostly solve this fight, so let's not panic here. Twenty percent chance to get a potion. Let's just not panic. We have nine block the next turn. Ow. All right, you're gone. Consider your mail opened. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. GG. So the other two reasons that we don't upgrade Limit Break are Exhume and Corruption. Why try to draw back to your Limit Break? after playing it, when you could just return it directly to your hand by using Exhume and then play it a second time, perhaps on the same turn that you played it the first time. That's a lot faster strength scaling. Or we could instead make all of our skills free with Corruption. With three Shrug It Offs, that's a pretty good deal. And that means Limit Break will also be free and naturally exhausts when played, again obviating the upgrade that the Limit Break gets. These two cards really shape the usefulness of Limit Break Plus for me in, in a lot of ways and greatly reduce it because both of them kind of punish you for spending an upgrade when you could be upgrading something else. I think in this case, we are going to take the Corruption. I like that it opens up Snekawai as a really good boss relic as well as allowing us to play lots of Shrug It Offs for free and get letter opener value from that. So I'm quite happy with the Corruption here. Let's do it. Corruption is a big energy saver for Clad and can let us operate on uh, no additional energy from our boss relic as well. So, for example, if we find unappealing energy relics and want to instead, say, transform seven cards, four strikes, three defends, we could reasonably do that. This could be a way to get more strength, which would be extra appreciated. I think Fusion Hammer is also okay here. We forfeit the ability to get further upgrades in exchange for more energy immediately. That makes our Heavy Blades a lot more playable and our Whirlwind a lot more deadly. That would let us go Elite Hunting pretty reasonably in Act 2 here. But Pandora's Box could be anything. Let's see what it is. It's a Feed, it's another Shrug, it's a Bloodletting. And it's a few random other cards. I think Searing Blow reasonably gets removed. Everything else here is quite exciting overall. And a good trade for our original starter cards. We now have four Shrug It Offs as essentially our only block. It's actually a pretty bad deal, the Corruption, right now. But we'll change that. We'll change that. I'm usually of the opinion that after taking a Pandora's box, you're in desperate need of a couple of removes and a couple of upgrades. And wow, that shop is not conveniently placed. Hmm. Probably going to go to this door then. Which means doing something kind of suicidal here. Or avoiding the elites. Hmm. I'm not sure we can go through this path, so we might need to go this way. If we want to get to the shop. We could also not go to the shop. Maybe there'll be a shop in one of the event rooms. That would help a lot. The other shop is here behind the front-loaded elites, and then there's nothing after the shop, which makes this a terrible shop to go to. So I think we look for shops in the event rooms, although it's quite unlikely. Let's see what happens. So glad I've got double shrug it off to deal with this nerd. It's actually a pretty good time to block Potion, too. Use Warcry to put the Shrug on top. Play either Heavy Blade or Whirlwind, or both, even. 
we got? No, let's do Shrug and Flame, actually. Keep the potion for now. Now is a reasonable time to use it. Saves nine health here. Yeah. As you can see, we're having trouble blocking. I think we're more likely to feed next turn if I play both Searing Blow and Cleave here. Or I could maybe Corruption Limit Break. It's actually quite reasonable. Let's do that. Two plus sixteen enough. No. Bummer. Dang. Looks like we don't get to feed today. Get offered a body slam plus, which is kind of insulting with our relative lack of block now. Hmm. Could consider an Anger here. Anger is a really good strength card. And this deck needs to do a bit more output. Let's take the zero cost attack. If only we had more energy, we could use Whirlwind to down them all. But uh, alas, tis not the case. I almost want to play the limit break here to do five to everybody. But Cleave does four to everyone. We can't. Now, the birds on Ascension 17 and up have four stacks of flight. That means it takes four hits, not three, to knock them onto the ground. Plus five. We can eat the middle bird. Doesn't really help me. Okay, now we're talking. Excellent. Get eaten. Thank you, self forming clay. So we either take seven or we play the Bloodletting, lose three health. The letter opener to our dirty work. Okay. Exhume! Put a card from the exhaust pile back into our hand. We can exhume feed and eat twice in a fight. Or we can exhume as pre-mentioned limit break here. With a corruption, exhume is all the better. Happy to take an exhume here. Already got a searing blow I don't want. I don't really want another dead weight. Though another relic does sound good. I'm trying to figure out the situations where I'm allowed to take this more and more. I don't think this is one of them. I don't think so. Oh, it totally was. That's all right. We lose the searing blow and I'm happy to get rid of it. It totally, totally was. We get another remove. All right. Well, got egg on my face. I think we might remove Bash next. Let's do that. Okay. Can we take two elites? Eh. Cleave is also a potential candidate for removal, but honestly, it's it's really not bad here in Act 2. Who's our Act boss? 
You're fighting Collector. Yeah, we want to at least have Kaleev for the Collector fight. So that we have another way to slap the minions. Just having one Whirlwind in a 20 card deck is not going to cut it. Thinking we want to upgrade either Corruption or maybe Sword Boomerang here. We should probably upgrade that Corruption. Not gonna cut it. This is so much more rewarding, though. Heck. Hmm. I'll just put that on top. Save a snack for later. Warcry really showing off uh, why I put it in the deck here, actually. I'm really happy with it. We skip the shop? No way. We are... Well, I guess we're lower on money now. Bloodletting Whirlwind, which then makes this Heavy Blade into a kill. We should probably do that. Though there's a spooky chance we don't draw what we need next turn. Too many days in the draw pile. Okay, Heavy Blade is 48. If I exhume Fee, there's no way that's a kill, right? No, it's only 24. And we can't accept that, so... We leave. One feed is enough for that fight. Rage I like. Whenever we play an attack, gain three block. Nice way to get a little bit of uh, augmented defense, especially on uh, our only three energy here. Although it does want an upgrade. Still nice here. We'll still have more than 300 gold going into the shop. I th still think it is quite important, although we no longer need the removal nearly as much. That's true. So we could consider going, perhaps, this way. Now that I have an energy potion, I'm much less afraid of the elites, too. Hmm. I can dig it. Shop could have a dark embrace, which is pretty important. All right, we'll fight an elite here. Gremlin Bleeder, you're up. I'm just gonna go ahead and corruption right away here. For this fight especially, we're looking to make it uh, as short as possible. Please put that on top. Do get attacked, unfortunately. Good time for skill potion then, especially since we could exhume whatever it is. I was wondering if we'd see impervious. Perfect, impervious. Then we can exhume the limit break instead. Get absolutely slapped. The man. Nice super block potion. Quick maths. 20 by 3 deals 60 damage, leaving the leader at 2 HP, and then Hourglass would kill him. Can't do that. That's too much damage. Hmm. Alright. Good. Tasty. A second feed. 
There's also Headbutt and Flame Barrier. I like Flame Barrier a lot with Corruption. Headbutt's pretty good too, though. Hmm. Two feeds seems like overkill when we already have the Exhume, right? Take a Flame Barrier. Especially since it just got plus one, so it's 13 block. And an Art of War to reward us for not playing attack cards. There will occasionally be turns where we don't play any attacks. Can't believe I was afraid of uh, the Elites here. Are we able to upgrade Feed now? I think we might be able to get away with it. Let's do it. I could be up to two more max health per fight, which is kind of a big deal, actually. Please enjoy your Flame Barrier. Let's take one on purpose here to get three block next turn. Sure, we get a wound, but whatever. Four. That would just kill. We want to eat this book, not just kill it. We anger this will go to 14 by 3. So 24 plus 14 by 3 is 66. Cool. There we go. So we. Oh, yeah, and we're going to do uh, 71, actually. Yeah. So we play anger, whirlwind. Bloodletting feed. Pay three health to gain fours and four max health. Pretty good deal to me. There's the Dark Embrace. Whenever a card is exhausted, draw one card. That is going to transform the whole deck. Corruption makes all the skills exhaust and makes them free. Dark Embrace is going to make those cards then draw cards. And that allows us to... Uh, spin up, essentially, and really put the hurt on our foes in a tremendously huge way. Doesn't seem like worth, it's worth enough damage. Let's not even bother. Why not Intimidate instead of Bloodletting? I needed the energy to be able to play the feed. Uh, that was almost too much damage. Almost. Oh, that was too much damage. No! No! <laughs> Eat them quick! No! <laughs> Shoot. Oh well. Minus eight max health we could have had there. How about another Dark Embrace as a consolation prize? Oh well. Anyway. Let's fight his neck. This does five damage? Sure. What happened is that my relics killed the enemies before I could eat them. And so we missed out on the opportunity to gain many more hit points. Truly a sad day. Here's our Corruption Dark Embrace combo. Live at last. The 
play a card, we draw another card. And that that kind of goes on as long as we've got novel cards to draw, although we could run out of cards pretty quick, it turns out. I guess we can just eat it then. Talk. Arma Plus, upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. We've got a lot of unupgraded cards in this deck. I like it. And with double Dark Embrace, we can easily end up with a 10 card hand as well. All right, can we eat them both? That is the question. Not if we don't actually draw a Dark Embrace. Need to kill this bird. Bird, you're out of here. You hear me? Gone. I'll be back for you. Here we go. Mega card draw. Nobody liked that bird anyway, that's right. Draw every card. satisfying. Just the entire hand fills immediately. It's good stuff. Give me a Burning Pact. More card draw. And we're trending towards upgrading Bloodletting, actually. Let's, yeah, let's do that. More energy is more better. Upgrading the Dark Embrace is also premium here, but realistically, it may not matter. Kind of a weak turn one. What a nice skill potion here. There's a couple good hits. Shockwave's not bad, but I like Battle Trance even more here. Let's upgrade it first. Draw me four cards. Hmm. And put this one on top. And pen of it. All right, good talk. Greetings, minions. Welcome to die. No. All right, now Collector does some nonsense while we play our important powers. Which are Corruption and Dark Embrace. All right, you can do your thing. Thirty-nine, huh? I'm actually not completely sure we're able to win this, by the way. I think we can. I'd really like to get the Inflame in play, though. Lose the unupgraded Heavy Blade? I suppose we will. Now. Sword Boomerang needs to be upgraded. Want more one in case the minions get resummoned? Air is in flame. Okay, finally. these. Anger. 
Boomerang. Battle Trance. Anger, Anger, Boomerang. Are we there yet? We're there yet. Eat him. How's that for a turn? GG. So that's why Corruption's really, really, really busted with uh, lots of card draw. We could just play 20 cards in one turn and beat the entire boss fight. Give me an Impervious, please. Really don't need more than one Corruption. Bludgeon ain't doing it. Heavy Blade's where it's at. Yeah, and charge the Pendant, too, just for funsies. And then we can either add Rake Dome, being unable to see what the enemies are doing. Not that bad in this sort of deck. This deck would definitely appreciate more energy. We could take the Sacred Bark. Double the strength of potions, although we don't have exactly a lot of good potions or anything. Or we could remove two cards. We already got two free removes last act. And Pandora's box mostly let us with left us without need for any up removals. So let's just take more energy here. Wouldn't Runic Dome risk us exhausting block at the wrong time, says Shaman Punching. That's true only if there is a wrong time. If we exhaust all our cards and kill the enemy on one turn, then there is no wrong time because the enemy's dead. Cry of the Wind! Did you hear about the Ironclad who ran a marathon? He was exhausted. Time Eater really scary? I don't think so. Not with not with our ability to get strength behind this. What we would like to do is find another strength card. This one in flame is really being stretched to its limit here. Limit is being broken, in fact. Limit break. You get the idea. I'm too rich to not go to a shop anymore. Although, maybe we can get a random shop. Of course, taking a bunch of events means less card rewards, means less other stuff. Also, we'd like to feed on things, so maybe take a bunch of combats instead, actually. Either way, we should go to probably this store. Yeah, that's the shop. But events are very valuable to us because of our ability to eat eat them. I don't like this one much. Kill the middle one. All right, good enough for me. There. Double nom. No such thing as too many shrugs when you've got uh, corruption. You know, with Runic Doom, I've realized I enjoy fights a bit less. Let's take an event here. Ah, well, that would be the one you're looking for. Either fight a boss from Act 1 to get a rare relic, upgrade all of our cards in exchange for no longer being able to heal or gain 999 gold, but become cursed with two copies of Normality. Those Normality curses are pretty bad. Although we could theoretically get to two shops. There's elites in the way. Seems like an I am war for me. That's true, we could find Divine Fountain again. It's only happened two runs in a row. <laughs> I'm taking the fight here. Oh no! Perhaps this was the worst choice of all. A hundred hit points into Hexaghost. It's a spooky time. 
Orcs is going to crit. So for, for those not in the know, this boss attacks on turn two for an, a number that's based on your current health total, which at the moment is very large. Now we can't see it here. Oh no. <laughs> but, uh... The number facing us is large indeed. Okay, Intimidate makes it a lot less enormous here. Easy. Haha! -ha! The combo. It was just six by six after being weakened anyway. No biggie. No biggie at all. That was hilarious. <laughs> All right, give me another limit break, thanks. Let's just eat you now. Good times. And for all of that nonsense, we get Charon's Ashes. Whenever we exhaust a card, now deal an additional three damage to all enemies. Gotta love Hourglass, Letter Opener, Charon's Ashes. The amount of damage output from the relics alone is quite enormous. Let's take another Warcry for that reason. Alright, with one of the best events found, I think we stop taking events now. Let's take some fights. I've got shapes to eat, after all. Nom. Zoom in here somewhere. There it is. Zoom impervious? Hell yeah. Eight max HP. These feeds have really paid off so far. Now do we want a headbutt? I think now we do. Although many of our cards exhaust, some of the cards that don't, we'd really like the ability to put back on top. So let's grab that. Keep the current potions. Triple Jawworm! They could attack for a heck of a lot on turn one if they so choose. I think I'm gonna go Flame Barrier Dark Embrace. Shouldn't need to gain strength in this fight. The uh, Charon's Ashes are gonna do plenty of damage. Triple Bellow! Spooky. <laughs> There's corruption. All well, all well. Just keep the party going. Literally bottom card feed. You. Exhume, put the last Jawworm on one hit point just in time to feed twice. Wow, that barely, barely worked. More shrugs, please. I guess we're a bottom feeder. Ha <laughs> ha! Ooh, here's a chance to get some rare colorless cards. Offered three to. Time. This is a perfect way to pick up mastery on something we uh, have not yet mastered, like thinking ahead or double sadistic nature. 
You all thought it was going to be a silent run? Nope. Random exhaust ironclad run. But Master's sadistic nature, obviously. I'll grab this too. As a reminder, the Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge requires us to win the game with duplicates of some of the various cards in Slay the Spire. Uh, with most of the cards already being accomplished here. Cards that say not mastered, we still have yet to win with. And that is very much the priority here. Hmm. Ah, perfect. So I'll just play that. 40% chance to get a new potion. I am going to this shop right away, am I not? Could go to this one. I'd better use this. Alright, we need to win this fight pretty quick. There's a plane, limit breaking zoom. Block will be plenty here. Okay. I'm just getting the bonus, bonus energy for next turn. I knew you were going to do that. Stinker. Tasty. More energy? A way to double our block. Actually, not a bad entrench at all. I'm gonna grab this. So, we either go to one shop or two. One to one, anyway. We get another shop in Act 4. I don't think we need to go to this shop then. Jack of Fools, thanks for the Prime sub, and Happy SH, thank you as well for four months. For a better chance at the Thinking Ahead Mastery, give up the upgrade, they say. Your logic makes sense, Twitch chat. All right, I'll play your game. Transmutation's back. Could buy that as well. That's a bit odd with corruption, though. Orrery is here, but there are no cards the Orrery could show us for the Mastery Challenge. It could offer us Strength cards, though. We're still looking for that. Let's... Alright, let's look in here. Another Rage, another Shrug, another Arma Plus, another another Shrug. Sentinel's pretty spicy. Another another Rage... I'll take this Rage Plus. And I think Sentinel over Shrug Plus. Both are pretty good. And the Arma. Double Tap's not bad either, actually. Alright, there are way too many non... <laughs> not attack cards in this deck now. We might have some issues, actually. Bloated. Yeah, bloated is a good term for what I've done here. Maybe there is such a thing as too many skills. Too many shrugs. Repto diggers don't thankfully won't be too much of an issue. Maybe they will be. Let's just say there's a reason we got two Dark Embraces.
Perfect. These poor thinking ahead. These uh, sadistic natures are awful. <laughs> Delicious. More max health via the strawberry and healing via the blood potion. Would we like a feel no pain plus or a reaper? I'm going to go with feel no pain plus here, but uh, both of these are very strong for the deck. I think it's feel no pain. We have so many exhausting skills. And we're doing just fine health wise, right? We've got lots of health. Give me the feel no pain. Block per exhausted card is beautiful. Just beautiful. Now, where's that barricade? Can I interest you in the third Dark Embrace instead? How about a Body Slam? How about a Toolbox? I like Toolbox. Let's just look at some colorless cards on turn one. Toolbox can make Discovery. Discovery can make Barricade. Sure. Could reasonably lose Cleave now. Sure. It's a chrysalis, actually. We don't want to kill them without feeding. Perfect. Double. Perfect. Right. Block however much you're going to do. I don't even care. Don't even try it. Feed. Anything I'd like to headbutt? Twin strike would be nice. You can only feed on the last one in this fight. Can't do a multiple feed or anything like that. Let's get these Dark Embraces upgraded. They're too expensive. Okay, this enemy... Oh, nice shrug draws, by the way. This enemy can be quite nasty with the... Runic Dome. We do not know if they're attacking us or trying to curse us or what. Shrugs away. <laughs> Chedits, thanks so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sip Club. The only thing, the only rule is that they don't curse on turn one, but now they can curse us at any time if they want to. There's nothing I can do about it. We just hit them with all our attacks because we have no information. Is the way of things. Let's 
I like that we can exhume the madness impervious and it's still zero cost here. Purely up to luck whether we get cursed or not. Essentially. God. Ow. 40 damage. At least we didn't get cursed, I guess. Wanted to rage first. Worry about it. Can't hurt me now. Good talk. All right, no curse, no curse. Good. you later. Third Dark Embrace. Yeah. Third time's the charm, right? All right, Time Eater. Prepare to get slugged. Consider using the regen potion in this fight. We can use it next fight. There are some who call me Tim. Two more cards. So probably Bloodletting and uh, I guess Flame Barrier over in Trench here. And Utopa asking, why do we have Entrench? This hand is a good example of why. It's blocking for more than Flame Barrier if we play it now, so that's why. Gonna do the flame barrier though, so that we can do return damage. Draw me some cards. That's more like it. Excellent, here we go. Now that we have all three Dark Embraces in play, we're drawing cards like a madman. And we should have no problem felling the Time Eater here. Still operating off just that one in Flame we got very early in the run. Never did find another Strength Source. Kind of awkward. turn. Let's 
or Boomerango. There it is. Okay. And they thought Time Eater would be an issue. Ha! Ah. Easy. Awaken one is much more of an issue because we actually have to play all these powers. I think we still just go. Ooh, free Impervious, that's nice. Excellent. Mostly has to be for limit rank, yeah. So, do we want to regen potion here? Could definitely be useful next act. I don't think we're gonna need any potions based on how time eater went. Okay, these get deleted. We don't play the sadistic natures. can eat two birds in this fight, although that would mean not exhuming... Hmm. No, we shouldn't do that. Yeah, not exhuming Limit Break would be mildly bad, that's a good way to put it. We would not be happy about it, let's just say that. This is the multi-attack turn. Awaken 1 normally attacks for a base of 6x4. With 10 strength, that's 16x4. 64 block required. We can just impervious a trench, and that's all we need. But instead, I'm going to shrug, because I want to draw more cards. 18x4. Twenty by 4 Okay, just block for 80. That's easy enough. I did it. Good talk. Right, we should be able to kill the Awakened One on this turn. If I pinned him with this whirlwind, dang. Okay, zoom that limit break. We might have been able to greet the other feet here, actually. This is fine, though. Real question is, can I set up Pendibon 9? Yes. Perfect. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of this chonkitude. You ready your sadistic natures and slap the heart for 2152. What are these powers even doing in my deck? Ten hit points missing. I'll upgrade this. Could have had double panache. I guess I'll settle for double feel no pain. If we want more strength, the flex potion gets us more strength. In the one fight where it's really going to matter versus the heart. Or maybe versus the elites, actually. 
Uh, if we want more help versus the elites, we can take the Sling of Courage. I'm definitely going to take this. Feel no pain. How many of my winning clad runs do I think are corruption decks? A lot of them. Probably a third. Maybe even more. Lots. Many, many lots. Beanfire also slaps like a truck here. Beanfire is pretty absurd. With three dark embraces in the deck. Actually, yeah, let's take Fiendfire. Keep the potions. That's a good Fiendfire. I choose violence. Choose it. Believe it or not, we're going to delete feed here. One, two, three, four, five. Fourteen by five. Seventy. Next turn looks pretty bad. I think I need to stay facing this direction. Uh, yeah, so we're not drawing any more cards here. Good. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. I don't want to upgrade the thinking ahead, because then it would fail to exhaust, and I actually want it to exhaust for the block here. That way I can limit break. And entrench. Again, one wonders, what is entrench doing in the deck? Oh no, we're going to negative two strength here. What is Entrench doing in the deck here? Blocking for 20, of course. What else? We take just a little bit of damage for next turn. Guess I will drink this. Good. Not bad. Here. We're going to take some more damage this turn. Probably want to headbutt Burning Pact. Ouch. Stabbed in the back. Means we should take very little damage this turn, though. Finally. Pretty good considering we bottom decked all the important cards. Ice cream! Energy is conserved between turns. And I'll take a second win to get let us get rid of status cards, just in case. If you limit break negative strength, you double the negative value. Regular math applies, so negative one times two equals negative two. Alright, Mr. Hart. I'll take a panacea. Block that vulnerable. Thank you. We could block something else, too. Sure. And I'll make you weak for several turns, also. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, it's a chonky deck of 42 cards here, but... Well worth it. I 
that's where we stop playing cards for now. Bank three energy for next turn. Could play feed there to draw one, but whatever. We're frail and nothing else. The heart is weak, so we don't take much damage at all here. Unfortunately, we don't also have also don't have much of a turn. We got fill no pain, flame barrier, sentinel. That's about it. Take a bit of a beating there. We'll block this. Continue to let Artifore bank energy for now. The attacks we could play aren't doing any energy, uh, aren't, aren't really doing any damage. Get rid of this heavy blade. Okay, this looks like a very good time to fiend fire. Headbutt. Burning Pact. Get some energy? Question mark? Yeah, play this. Delete. Anger. Yes. Here we go. to put all those powers in play. The important stuff except in previous is upgraded. All powers are now in play. We still have plenty of health. Let's go. Looks like this is a good turn for the rage then. Yet to play Livid Break, that's right. Yeah, that's right, we're still at three strength. That's the next thing to fix, I guess. This is a full block, so let's just spend our energy doing damage. Want to hit this turn. There you are, limit break. Okay. Full strength. Now we can do some real damage. Hit me. Ninety damage to your face. But that heavy blade. It's bonkin' time. GG, Mr. Hart. GG! If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.